Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me this week. So last week I talked about the benefits of group work and I also talked about different uh, situations where we use group work. This week I'm going to be talking about when is it important to actually give students individual think time or individual work. So if you're interested in this topic, then please keep on watching. Okay, so I'm just going to move myself out of the way. Let me make myself a little bit smaller here. And I'm going to talk about the benefits of individual work. So we all value group work, teamwork and collaboration. It's a very important skill uh, for the workforce and for society as well. We have to also take into consideration the benefits of individual work. So the first benefit that I want to discuss is it gives thinking time. So sometimes we actually need individual thinking time where there isn't noise, where you're not talking to someone, but you're just actually processing what the problem or what the information is that you've been given. Another benefit of individual thinking time is that it improves confidence because it's a low risk situation. You know, you're internalizing and trying to process the information or the problem that you're trying to unpack and solve. And it gives you some time to build some confidence, to access your prior knowledge and see whether there's something that you can contribute to the problem when you actually go into the group work. I think it develops self-management skills. Uh, it's important that we are developing uh, learners that are independent, that are not spoon-fed, and that they are given that individual thinking time to be resourceful, to access their prior knowledge and develop their self-management skills. Okay, so there's some of the benefits of individual work and giving students individual thinking time. Now, when should we actually give students time to individually think? So I've got some suggestions here when we actually do individual work. One is when we want students to individually set goals and targets for themselves. So this is when they're actually target setting and looking at what their strengths and weaknesses are and trying to identify areas of development. And I think when we give our students metacognitive prompts, such as I used to think, now I think, or I chose this method because, or whatever metacognitive prompt you give your students, that's individual time as well. That, that is when you want students to self-reflect. And then I've also got here evaluating progress and achievement. Uh, so, Again, students identifying their own strengths and what they need to work on. That should be an individual endeavor. I've also got that in the initial stages, when you're presenting students with the scenario, the initial scenario or the provocation or even the problem, the situation, the context, give students think time before they jump into a discussion. So even if it's like five minutes to just read the question or read the scenario, even individually writing some notes and initial ideas, and then jumping into that group discussion, which is a think pair and share, or maybe it's a triad, where you want students to then start bringing in their different perspectives and their different ideas for problem solving. So they're my suggestions of when we should actually do individual work. Uh, group work is very valued, and I know that uh, there are a lot of wonderful uh, projects and activities that we can do with group work, but I think at the same time, we do need to value uh, when to give students individual think time and when they need to do something uh, individually. Now, I believe that it should be like a dial in the classroom, whether you have whole class talk, group work or individual work. So if your learning experience has been designed like a project where everyone has a different role, I would still encourage students to read the instructions by themselves first before they jump into that discussion. And when it comes to whole class teaching and whole class discussions, you may be doing that on the spot in a very fluid and flexible way, according to how you formatively assess student learning during the lesson. You identify a point in the lesson where there needs to be a whole class discussion to kind of consolidate um, some ideas or to address some misconceptions. Then you're going to pull the class together. 
So while I don't think it's really rigid that you either do group work or you do individual work or you do whole class discussions, it's like this constant adjustment and dial in the classroom of when you actually have any of these instructional strategies. So thank you so much for joining me again this week and I hope to see you next time. Bye.